So hi, Tone. Thanks for joining Hello us. There. Yeah, no problem. Nice to be here. Thank you. Um, I guess if you're happy, maybe you could kick off by telling us a little bit about um, MAG Interactive. Yeah, sure thing. So um, so MAG Interactive is um, celebrating its 10th anniversary this year um, in November. We've got a suite of events going on across all of our games to um, to kind of highlight the fact that we've um, you know we've managed to to grow and do well over the course of, of this last 10 years we're predominantly or solely a um, a mobile casual game uh, developer and publisher so we um, we create our own IP we develop it all internally we publish it and market it and have the whole um, ecosystem of the of the business kind of all contained within in mag um and that's great uh, regarding the the freedom and the security that it gives us uh to to make decisions about what we want to do um since mag started it's found a lot of success with um predominantly word games and, and puzzle games and quiz titles um some of our biggest games are, are games like Ruzzle, which has had over 60 million downloads in its, wow. in its life. Uh, Word Domination, which has had over 10 million downloads, I think. And we've got a, a game called Quiz Duel, which is um, probably less well known in the UK, but in Europe, it's the um, it's the biggest live uh, quiz app in, in, in Europe with over a million uh, daily active users. So, um, so there's a lot of pedigree and success in the the games that we've uh, that we've made uh brighton used to be a, an independent studio called um called delinquent that joined uh, the mag family about four years ago and since then has integrated properly with the um with the head office in in stockholm and and we've learned how to um how to work in the in the mag way and how to um how to make uh great games uh the game that's coming out of Brighton at the moment that's our biz biggest success is a game called Wordsy, which is another PvP um, anagram game, which is doing really well. It's growing really quickly. Uh, we're growing the team in Brighton to to do this, and it's great to see um, to see Brighton have its own uh, game that fits within the mag uh, the mag portfolio and and being able to to grow that and to grow the studio as as part of it. Um, I think overall, uh, Mag is about a hundred people, um, and it grows. It's growing slowly, and we've got a, a roughly eighty percent, twenty percent split between Stockholm and Brighton. So there's about twenty two, twenty three people uh, currently uh, working in the in the Brighton studio, um, and we're like I say, we're going to grow that over the next um, the next few months. We've got a, a lovely office in Central Brighton that is. Um, Got lots of nice space it's currently sitting empty but mm -hmm. there we go and um but it's a, it's a lovely location um i think mag uh likes to uh to try and do things slightly differently to um to lots of other uh game studios i think what i found since joining so i've only been there for about uh six months uh just under six months now uh myself is the um the flat structure that mag uh prides itself on which is a, a way of involving as much of the studio as possible in the decisions that the company is going to make whether that's deciding what our next game that we're going to develop should be um, which prototypes to take further um, how and the team autonomy within that means that the teams can um, can drive their own ways forward and they can decide what is best for the product that they own and how to um, how to grow that and how to turn that into a success and that's um, that's a really uh, important part of how uh, how mag uh, likes to work it's something that that we kind of cultivate and and treasure because I think it's um, it's very easy for um, for game studios to say we give people lots of autonomy to choose how they want to work but it's very difficult to actually do that in practice and be comfortable with the the people that we're hiring that they have the right skills and the right um uh mindset and and way of working within mag to um to to be able to uh to do that so um so i guess that's mag in a nutshell in brighton we have uh we have wordsy which i say is growing really well we also look after the um 
the live ops of some of our, our legacy older games um, for MAG. And we've got uh, two other titles that are uh, in earlier stages of development that I can't talk about. But I think it's worth pointing out that we don't only do um, puzzle and word games. Um, so one of the new games that's in development isn't a puzzle or a word game. It's something else in the casual multiplayer um, space. Brilliant. Thank you. That's that's really helpful. I, um, I'd i forgotten to also introduce your colleague, Ruth, who's on the chat. So I can see that she's um, answering lots of questions as we go along. So thank okay. you for joining us, Ruth, and for, um, for, for speedily answering a lot of those questions that are coming in. Um, I think it was really interesting when you were just talking about sort of that relationship sort of between Sweden and the UK and do you think that sort of is sort of what helps to inform some of your culture at MAG and I know you talk about that sort of like that flat structure mm -hmm. um, that you have um, I guess this is sort of two questions in one so do you think that's informed by that or, or do you think it's sort of around the content that you make so is there is there a sort of a difference between maybe that sort of AAA studio and you as a as a mobile um, games producer do you think that sort of is gives a different type of work experience um, I think it's um, it's a good question, but I think it's informed by both. And the way that um, the, the the studio mag originally was created was to really try and step away from a lot of the the hierarchy and the politics that you find with um, with businesses. So um, so there was a kind of a conscious attempt to make sure that um, that everybody was involved and we feel like a, a collective that's working uh it's all working together for the for the same shared goal um and that uh that comes through in um like we say the the fact that um anybody can can present an idea or can talk about something they want to do or come up with a game co game concept to talk about in the con in the company it's reflected in the fact that um there is a, a tradition that i haven't seen much of yet because i haven't really been in the studio very much but um you're not allowed to wear shoes in the um in the studio mm. you're supposed to wear slippers because that kind I of have helps been to your it. studio and regretted my sock choice on a number of occasions <laughs> yeah we've got a good line in in promotional socks that we like <laughs> to um we like to send around as well um and i think that part of it really helps people to feel like everyone is um is contributing to the same thing it removes a lot of the the hierarchy and the barriers to being involved when it comes to working on a mobile game compared to um, to a larger console or AAA game, there are a lot of benefits to that because you find yourself much closer to the um, much closer to the action, if you like. Mm. You've got much smaller teams of maybe twelve to fifteen people working on a game in total, and that's spread across uh, design, art, and code. So you may find yourself in a small pod of a team working on a feature that you can get done you can um, get it integrated into the game and that can be live within a, a couple of months. And then the the main difference is you find yourself working once it's live. This game's a service um, approach where you are um, reviewing the data, you've got direct feedback with the players and you're working out the best way to, um, to, to improve the game, to help make your players uh happier to to get them to ultimately spend money or watch more adverts because that's what we need to to survive um uh, but by doing that in a way that um the the players feel happy that they are doing it because they are invested in the game and they want to so you've got a, a very close connection between um the games we make and the audience and the the people making the games need to be to be sympathetic and they need to understand what the players want and we kind of we nurture that across the um the whole studio i think and i know sort of on that point i know we've talked a lot about sort of diversity and inclusion and i know that mag are on um, a diversity working group here in sussex and mm -hmm. you know we're one of the founding members of that and have hosted a lot of the meetings and you know what comes out from from your involvement in in that working group is really you know diversity and inclusion is a is a core business requirement of mag as you talk about sort of needing to know your your audience do you want to sort of talk a little bit about that and sort of what that need is and, and the business drive sort of behind it yeah yeah absolutely i think it, it's just trying to make sure that um, we want games that are um, played by by people across the world um no matter and we want to have we've got a very broad appeal for our for our games and that needs to be reflected in, in, in what we um 
in the people who make the games. It was interesting, kind of in your previous chat with Guy, talking about you know four white males up here talking about about what's going on. And you're absolutely right. That's not um, the most uh, diverse or, or reflective way of of trying to to make content for a game that might be for Wordsy, for example. You're making a game that's predominantly played by. Um, by uh, women in their forties to sixties, often in, in in the U.S. So it's um there's a there's an element there where we need to um to to broaden the people that we uh, hire to make the games and who informs the the games that we make. And that's like you say, that's very very central to Mag and how we work. And again, as part of that, we've got a, um, a diversity and inclusion uh, group internally where everybody can kind of feed in and and um and give suggestions or try and help find areas for us to maybe hire people from different backgrounds or to make sure that we're we're represented in 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 certain um in certain areas um so whether that's um trying to make sure we've got more women in development trying to make sure that we're attracting people from less traditional backgrounds to come in and work in games and also trying to um to make sure that the events and the the way we promote our games reflect the company ideology as well as the audience. For example, we've just seen good, good success running a series of, of eco events in, in some of our games where we committed to planting trees based on the amount of um, acorns that were collected in, in the event. So we were kind of, I think we're perhaps planting just short of, um, of 5,000 trees as part of that. And that's something that was important to Mag to do to make sure that we looked like that we were um, standing up for for what we uh, we believe in. So it all ties together to just uh, give a hopefully give an idea of how um, how Mag tries to be as authentic as it as it can be um, as a company. Perfect. Thank you. I was going to ask you what you look for when you were hiring, but I can see that Ruth has ploughed through lots of. Um, lots of very specific Excellent. in the chat but i guess do you sort of just to just to sort of wrap up do you have any sort of specific tips or advice for anyone who is you know who would really like to sort of take this approach of working with with someone like mag is, is there anything that would be sort of a takeaway that people could take away i think, I think the uh, the most important things that, that i'm interested in or i look for for anybody who's um who's, who's applying to mag is to make sure that the the fit is is what's important, and by fit, we're talking about you know their um, personality fit within the team. You 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 want to be able to um, to talk about how you work or talk about your kind of interests in our in our game in a way that 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 shows that you're going to be able to work in a small team, relatively autonomously within that team, and uh, you are clever enough you're driven enough you've got enough um you can build trust around you so that the team can continue to work that the most important thing in small in small mobile teams and game teams is the dynamic between people because then if there's respect and um an understanding between everybody then the teams can can gel and work together so how to translate that into specific advice i'm not entirely sure um but i'm much more interested in someone who can um show how they can uh they can contribute to um to making the game a success because they're a, a fan of the game and they are going to work well with the company culture um and then the other experience and the um and their technical abilities while not unimportant it's less important than than somebody who's going to work well within the company we've got a very valued culture in mag and um, and we work hard to 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 maintain that. Brilliant, thank you. Well, thank you so much for your time, and a huge thank you to Ruth for um, giving so much advice um, in the chat. We'll make sure we uh, capture uh, some of those key points that we can share after the event. So, Excellent. huge thank you to Tone and and Mag for joining us today.